Now, long-time viewers on the channel will know I've been using InstaWP to spin up WordPress websites, to build development sites, to use this as a tutorial basis for probably over two years since I grabbed the lifetime deal on AppSumo when it first released. Since then, an awful lot has changed, and I have released several videos going back and taking a look at some of those changes. You can check some of those out in the link in the description down below. Recently, they've released version three of InstaWP, and that brings two key changes, a change to the interface and the way things operate a little bit, and some new features included there, which we'll look at in this video, but also the payment model. That has changed as well. If you're using InstaWP and you're a paying customer already, or you have that lifetime deal, this isn't going to affect you. So don't worry, you don't have to do anything. However, if you want to move over, or if you want to create a new account and test this out for yourself, then these new payment options are available to you. So let's take a look at what they are and take a look at what implications they have. Before we go any further though, this is a sponsored video by InstaWP, but as always with any sponsored content on this channel, I'm not going to give you any opinions. I'll demonstrate these new features, show you the payment model. You can make a more informed decision for yourself if it's right for you. So once you've created your account and logged in, this is what you're going to see. I've created a brand new account. So if you are new to InstaWP, you can follow along with me and see exactly what it's going to look like in the same way as yours will. If you're a long time user, you'll just have some sites included in your, and you can probably skip over the beginning of this video if you want to. So what exactly is InstaWP? Let me give you a quick TLDR on how you use it, how you set things up so you can kind of get an idea. So what it does is it allows you to spin up copies of WordPress in a matter of a second or so. Let me show you how that works. We we'll click to create a new site. Inside here, we've got a series of different options we can choose from. First of all, we can choose the WordPress version, PHP, and the location of the server. If you're a long time user, you'll notice we now have a new edition of Australia. So if you are based in that part of the world, Australia is available to you as the server. We're going to leave this as the US. That's perfectly fine. I'm not going to give this a site name and we get an overview of what we have chosen on the right hand side. You also notice we've got snapshots from store and from AI. To give you a quick TLDR with those, snapshots are basically like templates. So you could set up a website using InstaWP and you could have a theme of choice, settings of choice, some content on there, different plugins and so on. And then you could save that as a snapshot template and then you can just reinstall a new site using that basic setup. It's pretty cool and speeds up the process. Consider it like a simple blueprint. From the store is basically the same kind of thing, but other people have created them. So you can take advantage of that. Or from AI, as his name would suggest, you can use AI to set everything up. We'll choose next step. And from here, we can now choose to install popular plugins. So for example, we've got things like page builders, like Elementor, Beaver Builder, Brizzy, Breakdance, and so on. Security plugins like Solid Security, e-commerce like WooCommerce, and so on. You can simply select any or all of the plugins that you want to install. And when you install and create your new site, those plugins will be installed and activated ready for you to hit the ground running super quickly. I'm going to leave it with a clean slate and we're going to click on next step. This is now where you'll see the first change over what you may have been used to. And like I say, if you're new, this is where we have the payment side of things. Now you can still use this for absolutely zero cost, but the limitation here is that the site you'll spread up instead of being like available for 30 days and kind of, unless you kind of lock it, it will only last for 48 hours, which in many cases may be perfect option for you. However, if you want it longer, we have to take a look at the sandbox option. If we select Sandbox, you can see this now has a price attached to it. The price is basically a monthly price, but better than that, you have a daily price. So if you only wanted to test something out and it lasted two days, you're not going to pay $2, whether you use it for two days, 10 days, or 30 days, you'll pay seven cents per day. Use it for two days, it's going to cost you 14 cents. Nice, simple, clean business model. Now, as I said, the sandbox is basically a development environment. This isn't intended to be a live site. However, if you want to use this with a live site, you can start with free or a sandbox and you can't upgrade any site you create and work on. So don't think you have to choose it right now. You can make those changes after you've got the site ready and then launch it onto one of the starter plus or pro plans. Difference being here, if we choose Starter, for example, this has some extra features. We have a basic CDN or content delivery network, and we also have backups inside your weekly backups, which will be available for four weeks. Again, you've got that pricing model of $5 per month or 17 cents per day. So again, if you put something online and it's only there for a couple of days, you'll pay 17 cents per day. You get a bandwidth limit and a disk space storage limit, and that goes up based upon what plan you choose. The starter is a pretty simple starter plan. Move to plus, 
This now gives you the premium CDN, so you have more locations around the world, so you're going to get a better response if you have a global audience. You also get the Shield option, and the Shield is basically some additional security, so things like protection against DDoS, you'll have a wireless application or WAF firewall, some extra features there for security, always good to have at a server level. And you also have daily backups instead of weekly backups. And as we've seen, you've also got a larger bandwidth allowance and a larger disk storage space allowance. And as you can see, you've got a selection of different types of hosting plans. You can pick and choose what is perfect for you. Or you can easily use the sandbox to build things out or the free version. And you can export this to your own hosting. You're not tied to having to use InstaWP's hosting. But it's there and it's simple to integrate should you want to. For example, let's choose the free option, which we see expires in 48 hours, and click Create Site. Now, the first time you do this, you are going to have to put credit card details in. Bear in mind, you won't be charged anything. This is basically to stop abuse of the system. Put your card details in, save that, and you can easily then go and create the sites, and you can upgrade should you want to. I'm simply going to put my card details in, and I'll create my account in the same way that you would. And after a second or so, you can see there's our new site all set up. It tells us what plan we're on, how long we've got to go on this, any disk space, we can add tags, etc., etc. You can also log directly into the dashboard. And now you have WordPress installed, ready to start making those changes and building these out and testing things. It is as simple as that. But there's an awful lot more you can do here. You're not limited to just spinning up a site, and that's all you can do. You'll notice we've got some options over on the right-hand side for our actions. We've already seen the magic login. You can see we can save this as a template or a snapshot. Like I said earlier, we could easily set these up, then save them as snapshots, be able to spin them up on other sites. You've also got the option to change plan, which we'll come back to in a moment. But click on the three dots, you can see there's an awful lot more options here for you. You can see your versions, your PHP and so on, your login details, etc. You can export this, so you can see we can export this out to a local WordPress, InstaWP, WordPress Studio and so on. Different integration tools, we've got tools we can edit the database, those kinds of good things. There's a bunch of options here, including the migration, and you can delete from here as well. But you can also click on any of these. So that then brings you into your dashboard for that particular website. Inside here, you can see it tells us what version of WordPress we're using, PHP, location of the server, the type of account we have, in this example, free. Any disk usage and so on. We've got the link to get access to the dashboard, the username, the password. If you want to add a label in, you can do, and a description. Very useful when you start to have multiple sites for various different things. You can give them names. You can tell it what plugins be installed, you know, kind of good things like that. Then you've got a breakdown of what plan you're on, the cost of that, the disk space, CDN usage, and so on. So depend upon what plan you have, those details will change accordingly. You've then got options for things like your PHP config. So if you want to customize and edit this, you can do. You can install plugins and themes directly from here, map your domain. So if you move this over to an actual live site, you can then map your domain to it so you have a proper domain, your so and so.com. You can local mount this, you can access it via SFTP and so on. You've also got a scanner and you can check for any vulnerabilities on your site. So lots of options here for the site itself. On the left-hand side, then, you also have more options. We can jump back to all of our sites from here. You can jump into the snapshots that you've created, and these will show you any snapshots. You can add a new snapshot from here as well. You can manage, and this allows you then to manage any sites that you connect up to InstaWP using the InstaWP Live Connection. And this allows you to basically create staging sites from a site you connected up. You can push updates over to it. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with that. You can sell from here, and this is where you can sell your templates and so on. You've got your settings for your configurations, deployments, teams, and you've got your integrations inside here. So we can integrate with things like Atarim, with MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, and so on, including things like PageSpeed Insights. Let's go back to our sites. And let's say now that we're ready to take this site and make it a live site. How will we go about doing it? It's very simple. All you need to do is come over to this little diamond, click Change Plan, and then choose what plan you want to jump over onto. So for example, you could go to the Plus Plan, the Starter Plan, the Pro Plan, or just take it up to a sandbox site from a free site, and then you just click on Change Plan, and then your billing cycle will start. And again, like I say, they'll be based on your daily billing charges. So starting at $0.07 cents per day. 
Now, Insta WP version 3 not only gives you a nice clean interface with nice modern updates, it also gives you a clear, simple pricing model that you can work with. You can start for absolutely zero cost with those up to 48 hour test sites, which gives you most of the flexibility you should need. But if you want to have a more development focused setup, you can move up to the sandbox. And then if you want to host with Insta WP, you absolutely can do with various different options available. The fact you've got monthly and you've got daily pricing means it's clear and simple. And if you don't have a need to have an ongoing basis set up for your sandbox or your live sites, you can see exactly what it's going to cost you at a glance. Now, as always, all applicable links are in the description down below. And if you've got any comments, questions or feedback, be sure to drop those in there because I'm sure Vikas, who's behind InstaWP, will be monitoring those and giving feedback as and when necessary. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care. Thank you.